worship thee, O ancients of days, who perform all things unto thy children. We thank you for assembling us again today to worship thee. We thank you, O Lord, for your blessings and mercies upon us. Give that exalted for all eternity in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are about to hear your word, O Lord, is sent to be with us. We cover this message with the blood of Jesus. Lord, Lord, Jesus. We cover your children worldwide with the blood of Jesus. Lord, Lord, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. solution in our life is through prayers. And the only way to communicate with God is through prayers. And that was why Christ cautioned us when he was on earth to watch and continue praying. For we not go into temptation. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is a right time for prayers. But so many believers have omitted that right time for prayers. We don't start praying when we have went into problems. That was why Jesus asked us to pray and watch, for we not go into temptation. But today we allow ourselves to go into temptation before we start praying. And this became the greatest problem that we are facing today. Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind that you are having your Bible, please turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm reading from verse 11. Says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Praise the living God. Amen. And when the Most High God was speaking through Jeremiah the prophet, he says he knows his thoughts for his children. The thought of God for us is for peace. His thought for us is for good. His thought for us is for life. The thought of God for I and you is for protection. He says not for evil. To give us a better solution on earth. Praise the living God. Amen. Then more interestingly, I proceed to verse 12. 12 says, then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hack him unto you. Why prayer is important? He said, then you must go and pray unto your God. What we have omitted today in Christianity is what God continue commanding that we should come to him in prayers before we have that solution. <laughs> As verse 11 says, his thought for us is for blessings, not for evil. But you must surely come to God in prayer. And today we are not praying. I want the church today to come together in prayer, to ask God to lead us in this year, 2019. I know so many, so many Leaders of churches may tell you that 2019 will be a year of blessing. But I don't think so. It is a year that we must go to God in prayer for God to bless our own year. I proceed to verse 13. And 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search for me, with all your heart. 
The Lord said, we must search for him with all our hearts before we can find God. Before we can find solution in whatsoever we are passing through. We must search for that God with all our hearts. Remember that this message of Jeremiah chapter 29 is like the message of this crossover of 2019. When Jeremiah was the only prophet saying something different, before the children of Israel went into that captivity of 70 years, Jeremiah prophesied of that captivity. And he says that there is no power that can change it. But the rest of the prophets, they prophesied that they will not go into that captivity. When we see evil for the year, the only thing that can save us from that evil is prayer, is God. Going to your maker in prayers. The wretched condition and life that we are living is not the will of God for I and you. But because we refuse to go into prayers, when you are in a wicked world, the book of Ephesians, in chapter 6, verse 12, St. Paul says, We battle against the wickedness in higher places in this world. This is the problem that most people are facing. The backwardness that we are facing is not the will of God. According to Jeremiah 29, the sickness epidemic and death that we are suffering from today is not the will of God. The failure and disappointments in our lives is not the will of God. It is being promoted spiritually and being invoked into our lives. And that was why St. Paul cautioned us properly, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers Prosperities, wickedness in the higher levels and in the lower levels. This is why you need to go to God in prayer. Praise that thing, God. Amen. But the book of Jeremiah is cautioning us that we must surely come to God in prayers with all our hearts and seek for that God for solution. Solution comes from the hands of God. Praise that thing, God. Amen. Amen. Now let us still turn back to the book of Mark to see the right time for prayers. We have right time for prayers. Mark chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 33. And he taken with him Peter and James and John, and began to be so amazed and to be very heavy. Praise and thank God. Amen. There is right prayer time for prayers. You don't allow yourself to go into problem before you start praying. You don't allow yourself to go into failure before you start praying. When Jesus knew that the hour is coming, and the hour is soon, that they shall deliver him into the hands of this world, he became worried. Verse 33 says, he became worried. The hour is not yet there, but in preparation against that hour. When evil is coming upon the earth, or upon your ways, and God gives refreshment to you. Why refreshment is important is this. Any nation without prophets, they perish. Any churches without prophets, they do perish. They will never survive. God normally gives us refreshment before those things come to manifestation. For we, to pray and avoid it. And when Christ realized that the hour is coming, he knew very well he cannot overcome that hour by his power. 
He cannot overcome it by his power. He needed support. And the scripture says, he called Peter, John and James, to move with him for prayers. That is the right time to pray. When they have arrested him, it's not the right time for him to pray. But before the arrest, he needed prayers so that he can overcome. The right time for you to pray is before that problem. You don't start praying when you have went into problem. It is not done. And when you start praying when you have went into problem, that prayer will not be answered. Some of us want to go for examination. They don't call for prayers. After writing the examination, they start calling, calling for prayers. It is wrong. And Jesus called his disciples. Come, let us go and prepare ourselves spiritually. The spiritual preparation is what helps you to overcome the physical things that we are seeing. Praise that thing. Amen. I proceed to verse 34. And that verse says, And said unto them, My soul is extreme sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Praise that be God. Amen. And Jesus says, His condition for the moment is horrible. He asks his disciples to be here. Praying. He called them to be there praying with him for him to move ahead for that special prayers. Praise that living God. Amen. Your business, why have your business collapsed? Because some of us believe in their smartness, their knowledge, their wisdom as men. I'm so wise. I have the best senses of doing things or the best way of doing things. Without the important preparation. Okay, our families, why is our families failing today? The misunderstanding and argument that brings the downfall of your family was in the bone of contention. That family was destroyed spiritually before the manifestation comes. And this is why you need to pray. That was why God said, you must come to me in prayers. And you see beautiful homes being destroyed. It comes spiritually. <clears throat> why our academical careers became failure? We lack spiritual preparation. Why our journey became a failure? Because we lack spiritual preparation. We capitalize on our wisdom as a man, our smartness, our physical fitness as young men. Without that spiritual preparation, without calling upon God, who can help us? Praise that thing, God. I proceed to verse 35. And that five says, And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Praise the living God. Amen. Each and every one of us will have moments of temptations, trials, difficulties in our life. Each and every one of us. We have time of difficulties in our life. And Christ, according to the scripture, he says he started crying unto the heavenly God. The power that has authority, the power that can change that situation, the power that can energize him spiritually to overcome, he started crying unto that God. This is why I'm encouraging the churches to depend upon God. Cry unto your maker who has made you. Search for your maker. Where you are is not by mistake. You didn't just appear on earth by mistake. 
you are being met by someone. And who has made us, has encouraged us from different prophets in the scripture to come back to him in prayers. But we refuse that we will not pray. Rather, we believe in our physical fitness. Praise the living God. Amen. And verse 36 says, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this call from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Praise the living God. Amen. There is hour of temptation that can never be taken away from you. God has mandated that this thing must come across my way as I live on earth. That hour of temptation and trials and difficulties, God has mandated it that it must come. What we need is the help of God. And when Christ realized that this was why he came on earth, he said in the first place, Heavenly Father, if it is possible, take away this hour of difficulties. Take away this hour of temptations and trials and tears. That was what Christ prayed for. But when he realized that that was why he came on earth, he said, Father, let thy way be done, not as I will. In moments of difficulties, we are shedding tears. We are blaming people. We are blaming the environment. It is wrong. We don't need to blame anybody. In that hour, God has mandated that such hour must surely come across your way. What you need is prayer. When he goes to the book of Luke chapter 22, and he says, when Christ was praying, the angels of God descended. Those angels are strengthening him. And in the second section of this uh, story, when Jesus asked Peter to pray, the hour is coming, the hour of temptation. Pray so that you can overcome alongside with me. Peter and John, they were just sleeping. Because today when we ask people to pray, they prefer to sleep. When we are little children, our parents can help us because we are little kids. But when we are grown up, don't expect anybody to do the job for you. Peter was there sleeping. John was there sleeping. James was there sleeping. And as I come to acknowledge, Peter is somebody who is physically fit. He believed in, the, in, in his fitness as a young man. But when the hour came, he denied Christ. Because of lack of that preparation. This is why some of your business are being destroyed. When you believe you have the influence in the business, you have links. You refuse to pray unto God who will protect and guide that business. And when that hour of temptation comes, your business will collapse. Our families collapse because we neglected that hour of prayers. When we could not pray over our family, Javes prayed unto the living God. He said, God, bless me in the first place. In the second place, enlarging me, O Lord. In the third place, protect those blessings. If God has blessed you with a family, without the protection of God in that family, the family may break down. If God has blessed you as a successful businessman, without the protection of God in that business, without constant prayers, that business will break down. If you are a professional sportsman, without that prayers and protection from God, you will end up so bad. This is why it is important for churches to come unto God in prayers. If the churches refuse to go to God in prayers, 
Individually, let us go to God in prayers. Individually, locate your maker. Who knows your problem? Whose solution comes from His holy hands? Praise the living God. Amen. If you don't mind that you are still having your Bible, please turn with it to the book of Matthew to see the encouragement of our Master Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 7. And he says, Ask, and it shall be and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto thee. Praise the King God. Amen. When Jesus was encouraging us about prayers, he encouraged we, the children of God, he said, ask for what is your need. What you need in your life. He says, ask the living God. Ask your beggar for those things that you need to support your life. He says, and when you ask wholeheartedly, you shall receive. When you ask God for what is your need, it is not important to continue going to men to ask. It is not important for you to continue going to your parents to ask. Let me tell you one secret about asking God for your problems. You may ask God that you need money today without hoping on any man to give that money to you. And along your way going, someone will ask you what is your problem, whom you have not seen for the first time. And when you say money, the person will give you more than what you have asked for. It is by the power of God we cannot gain anything without the help of the living God. That was why Jesus said, ask. The things that you needed for your life, ask, it shall be given to you. And he said, seek. Seek. Go and seek your beggar. The most important person of power to you is your beggar. He said, seek. You shall surely find out you are God. And when St. Paul was analyzing about our God in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 17, he says, our God is closer to each and every one of us. And if you, find, if you seek for this God, you shall find that God. And you will find solution. He says, continue knocking. When you pray for one day, your prayers is, are not being answered. You pray for the second day, no answer. Third day, no answer. Don't give up. Continue praying. It's happened to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 10. And when Daniel decided to know more about the refreshment that God has given to him, he started praying. And that chapter says, the first day, from the first day that Daniel prayed unto God and God answered. From the first day. And God sends an angel to him for solution. Angel Gabriel. But the prince, the demon of that land, the prince of Persia, intercepted that angel for 20 days. Daniel keep praying. He prayed for one day, his prayer was answered. But because there was no manifestation, he continued praying for more 20 days, making it 21 days. Before God could send angel Michael to help him over that issue. It is applicable to I and you. When we pray for a month, if there, if there is no solution, if there is no answer, continue praying. That was why Christ said, keep knocking. Knock, it shall be opened for you. You can get your solution from God. We cannot get solution from any power or from any man. Praise that be God. Amen. And verse 8 says, for everyone that asks it, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knock, it shall be opened. The 
assurance that Jesus was given to believers is this. Nobody that comes to God that will go back is said. If you come to God wholeheartedly, if you go to God wholeheartedly, But I'm encouraging the churches to go to God wholeheartedly. It's for the sake of your solution, not for the sake of my own solution. I have my own problems. You have your own problems. But we must go to God in the right way before there will be this manifestation, before we can receive what we need. Now, for instance, in the days of Jeremiah the prophets, he told them, this is what God has said, and this is what must surely come to pass. No power can change it. It is similar to what is happening today in the churches. We saw, see some of the false pastors and false ministers. They tell you everything is well. You are blessed. It's the day of blessing. And you are not seeing that blessing coming. And the true man of God tells you that you must run away from your evil ways before God will bless you. You propose that message. And those that, that have assured us with any kind of life that we are living, we are blessed. Where is the blessing? We are not seeing the blessing. Rather, we continue seeing more misfortune. We tell the brothers, ministers, our God is holy. If the president of nation will be here, I know everybody will be royal. Everybody will humble himself. But who has made heaven and the earth and the president will be here and nobody will like to respect that God. You see some people when they, after taking alcohol, they start jumping, jumping, speaking in tongue. You tell me there is a solution again. That is nonsense. 